Hey kiddos, um, one of the chapter books that I really like to read to my class is called Cabin Creek Mysteries, The Secret of Robber's Cave. Um, and I really like it because it's a mystery about three kids um, who go on some pretty cool adventures. So <clears throat> I'm going to read this to you chapter by chapter. Um, you can listen to as many chapters a day as you want or one chapter a day however you want to do it but i'm going to load them into youtube one chapter at a time okay so our first chapter is called lost island as the canoe glided toward lost island 12 year old jeff bridger dipped his paddle into the water steering it into the inlet Though it was summer, the air was cool. Clouds over the mountains darkened the sky. Jeff worried about a storm coming, but most of all, he felt uneasy about setting foot on Lost Island. Let's stay together, David, he said to his 10-year-old brother. We don't know what's out here. This was the first time they had been this far on the lake by themselves. Their father had always warned them to stay off the island. When David turns 10, we'll all go together, he had said. But I don't want you boys out there a day before that. It's more dangerous than it looks. Today was David's birthday. Last night, the brothers had been too excited to sleep. They had lain awake in their bunks, whispering about what they might find. They wondered about the legend, a terrible and true tale, their father had said. A real robber, a cave, stolen treasure, a sheriff, and more. Their mother had no idea they were so far away from their cabin today. She was the town's veterinarian and would be working late at the animal hospital. She had left her sons a note asking them to be home by sunset and to fix their own supper. They would celebrate David's birthday next week. Jeff and David Bridger knew about the wilderness from camping with their father, a forest ranger, and because they lived several miles from town. Their log cabin was on a lake which looked out at Lost Island. Ever since the brothers were little, they had watched this island with binoculars, hoping to find clues to its mystery, to learn why their father had declared it off limits. But now they would have to track down the truth themselves. It was a great sorrow that dad was no longer there to take the boys as promised. During winters, he had worked with the ski patrol on Blue Mountain. But last December, he and another ranger had been killed in an avalanche. Thick fog, then a blizzard, had prevented rescuers from finding them for several days. Ever since, the brothers were nervous about storms. Also, they were now more determined than ever to explore Lost Island, Uncovering the legend would help them feel close to their father. In the canoe, the brothers wore whistles around their necks and life vests. Cell phones didn't get reception in these mountains, so they had walkie-talkies hooked to their belts. They also carried pocket knives and canteens from the Army Surplus Store. Almost there, David yelled. The younger brother always rode in the front when the boys took out the canoe. His blonde hair was windblown like straw. Rope in hand, he was ready to jump into the shallows. His day pack was below his seat in an inch of water, but he wasn't bothered by wet things. As usual, his t-shirt was inside out with the tag in front. His socks were mismatched. The boy's dogs, Rascal, a black Scottish terrier, and Tessie, an old yellow lab, were in the center of the canoe, like passengers on a sightseeing trip. They had sat still for the, for the 30 minute ride from the family's dock to the island, but at the sound of the hull scraping against the pebbly bottom, they jumped overboard and splashed to shore. Stay, the boys commanded, but their dogs ran into the woods as if chasing something. Birds flushed up from the, tr the trees with noisy chirping. Jeff suddenly felt shivery. Now that they were up close, the forest looked unfriendly, like a dark, prickly wall. I wonder what the dogs are after, he said. David looked uneasy. Me too. They pulled the canoe onto the beach. Well, we're finally here, said Jeff. Then being practical, he patted the canoe and said, let's turn this upside down so it'll dry out. Then we can take a look around. 
He had brown hair, and even though he hadn't brushed it that morning, he didn't look as rumpled as his brother. The emblem on his t-shirt read, Junior Explorers, Grizzly Paw Wilderness. It was the name of the club started by their father to teach kids survival skills. The shirt was Jeff's favorite. As they tipped the water from their craft, they again called their dogs. There was no response. This wasn't like their pets who usually came when called. The brothers looked up at the sky. More clouds had appeared in the north. Just then, barking pierced the air. David swallowed hard. That's Tessie. Uh-oh, said Jeff. It sounds like she's in trouble.